Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, we've got Super Awesome Death Killer playing the Tier 10 Imperial Japanese Navy battleship Yamato. And I, I highlighted one of his games not too long ago. <laughs> and he had a strong game with over 200,000 damage. And I think he played pretty well. There was uh, there were some positioning issues for the team. I won't lay it all at Super Awesome Death Killer's feet. That flipped a game that seemed like it was a for sure win into a loss. This game, things go a little bit more smoothly. I'll just say that. So, taking a look at the lineup, you got Yamato and Shikishima. Now, Shikishima is a, that is a, that is a beast of the battlefield. Kura first versus Kremlin. Now, of course, these aren't direct lineups, but I'm going to go through the matchmaking here. You got a St. Vincent versus Thunderer, a Thunderer, Thunderer, a Magi, Gas Gascon. I give the edge there to Gascon, although Amagi does have really good guns for a tier 8 battleship in the tech tree. Des Moines, Wooster, Venezia, Hindenburg, Johan de Witt, Carno, uh, Montpellier, Albemarle, Charles Martel, Harbin, and then you get into the, the submarines, Balau, Thrasher, U-190 versus Salmon. Now, what is conspicuously absent from our matchmaking, you might be wondering. <clears throat> I imagine most of you are well aware there are no destroyers in this game. That alone is worthy of being posted up here. That just doesn't happen very often. At least for me, especially in the last couple of weeks, it seems like most of the time I've logged into play, I'm logging in and I find four or five destroyers, one or two subs, one cruiser, and then fill the rest out with uh, battleships and maybe a CV. It's ugly. This is really nice matchmaking. You know, granted, subs are kind of a pain in the neck to deal with, but if there's any class or ship type that can deal with them effectively, it is battleships. Now, in case you're wondering why I say that, it's because torpedoes lose lock-on farther away from battleships. The range of the depth charge airstrikes is longer on battleships. In my opinion, they are the best equipped to handle subs. So here we are in the early going. Not quite three minutes in, and our hero is putting some shots out on Wooster. Wooster is trying to get out from underneath of him, and he does. Now, one of the things about the, the Yamato, at least in my opinion, is that it's really, really dangerous to push in early. Now, he's tempted to shoot at the Wooster, and I guess I can't blame him. But I think I probably would have taken a shot at the battleship, honestly, though this may work out really well. I think Shikishima picked up some speed while he was looking elsewhere. And so a miss on the Wooster and one overpen on the Shikishima. But it's still really early. Really early. And there is a broadside Hindenburg at 17 clicks, which for the Yamato is mid range. Gets all the guns away. He's looking to see where the Shikishima is aiming. Nice shot. A little over 11k there. You can see some submarine torpedoes coming in. And it looks like our hero intends to put shells on Shikishima now. But he's gone dark. So, oh, detected again. Shells out on a broadside Shikishima, Malicious Eagle. Taking a big risk there. But those shells fall short and only 9,500. So a little over 10,000, 11,000 damage on a broadside Shikishima. And at this point, Super Awesome Death Killer is fully broadside to the Shikishima. And shells are on the way. Yeah, 36,000 plus damage. That is the threat of the Shikishima. 
super awesome death killer, seeing whether he can return the favor as he does what he can here against that submarine. 18,000, half as much damage, but still a nice smack. Thunderer now pushing into the Thunder Zone of Yamato's guns. Yeah, that 36,000 HP shot really hurt. <laughs> Little chip damage on the Thunder, and I have to really hand it to Super Awesome Death Killer here. Staying aware of where the sub is at and finishing him off. Really nicely done. So we're five and a half minutes in. And Super Awesome Death Killer's taken out the Salmon, and Cool Hand Joe 11 in the Kura first finishes off the Shikishima. Michael. Wooster is dangerously close. And he's pretty maneuverable, but he's almost stopped at this point. I don't know how he's going to avoid taking big damage here. But he does. I mean, he takes a little bit. I think, honestly, Super Awesome Death Killer fired a little too high. It kind of went over the bow because the Wooster turned in. Thunder taking the shots from range and the fire started. Super awesome Death Killer. Looks like he wants to finish off the Wooster. Aimed a little bit lower this time, which I think was really good. Those shots looked good. And with some help from Venezia, Wooster is sunk. Right now, the, the red team is down four ships, and the green team is only down two. A lot of incoming fire. And Super Awesome Death Killer is down to 32,000 damage. And throws it in full reverse, trying to get a broadside shot on that Thunderer, which I think is probably a really good idea. Thunderer doesn't look like he's turning much. This could really be bad for Stealth Donkey and the Thunderer. Cross your fingers. Yeah, nice shot. 27,300 damage the Citadel. And Thunderer is out of the game, and just like that, the red team is down five ships. Good guy is now down three ships. First to Magi and Malau. While the red team is down a Shikishima, Thunderer, Wooster, Hindenburg, and Salmon. And I don't know what it is about this red team sailing broadside to a Yamato and a Thunderer, but they are. Shots out. And Thunderer may turn in and avoid most of it, but he's not going to avoid it all. Nicely done. There's another 13,000, 14,000 on the Thunderer. And eight minutes in, Super Awesome Death Killer is sitting at 127,000 damage. Is he going to set any records? No. But is that a healthy chunk of damage? It sure is, and he's got two kills on top of that. The Red Team's Thrasher, captained by Jody BC, finishes off Bad Boy 13 in Montpellier. Green team now down five ships, red team down six. Huge commanding points lead for the green team as the red team works to try and secure the Charlie Cap. Thunder has got those in. And this is a really dangerous spot to be sitting, broadside to a Thunderer. And the, the cheek is so, so susceptible to eating big Citadel shots. <clears throat> yeah, is he gonna is he gonna have the time to get this shot away? Uh I think he might. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Well, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Thunderer accelerates just enough to be able to avoid being sunk by those shells, but he's not long for this world. Charles Martel finishes off the Thunderer, while the Red Team's Kremlin takes out the friendly Charles Martel. And the Red Team, they're doing all they can to stay in this game. They're down on points significantly, but they're now in the Bravo cap and about to secure that. They have the Charlie cap, 
and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to call this thing wrapped up as long as the red team has a cap lead. There's still over 10 minutes left in the game. And Super Awesome Death Killer is positioning to try to get shells on the Kremlin. He had to choose between running north and going around that island or going bow in to try to get a shot on the Kremlin. But the Kremlin, he's almost stopped and he's beginning to turn his nose in now. The Kremlin may be putting shells on the Venezia if he's detected. Venezia's in trouble. I hope he goes dark because if he's still firing, he's got Gascon on one side. Kremlin and Carnot on the other. And uh, some continued praise for Super Awesome Death Killer keeping track of where the sub is and whether or not he can lay some depth charges on him from an airstrike. Johan de Witt trying to get the Kremlin burning. And our hero puts a big shot out on him. And it is time for the airstrikes on the set. One overpin on Kremlin. 164,000, 167,000 damage now. And raining down some problems onto the Thrasher. A little surprised, honestly, that the Thrasher hasn't targeted Super Awesome Death Killer yet. The U-190 finishes off Thrasher with a torpedo. Nicely done. Good guys now have five ships. Bad guys are down to four, but the bad guys do have two caps to the one green cap. I think if the red team loses another ship first, this thing's probably in the back of the green team. 173,303 damage for Super Awesome Death Killer. Carnot is pushing in, and he's going to be showing a lot of side. He's trying to shorten that angle now, but it's still a lot of side for these big shells, and I think this might be it for Carnot. Well-placed shots, a Citadel, two overpants, but the two penetrations, that's all Super Awesome Death Killer need to finish off Carnot, and that's, that's going to be the game. 195,374,000 damage and counting. The U-190 is now able to push toward the cap. Super Awesome Death Killer trying to stay at least reasonably well angled against the likely approach of the Kremlin. Doesn't have to worry quite as much about shells from Albemarle. Albemarle might start fires, but that's really the only threat there. And with 47,000 damage, that's not as big a threat. You can see Kremlin now behind an island and managed to catch the Johan de Witt and finished him off. Super awesome Death Killer now apparently deciding to go after the Kremlin. I think that's smart. I would probably just keep my guns targeted to the right. If you're unaware, you can hold down the right mouse button and that'll lock your guns where you have them pointed. If you don't do that and you turn to the left of center when you're looking, you start swinging the rear turret around to the other side, which is what's going on right now. But this might be enough. Russian battleships do not do well with broadside shots, and the Amato guns are so big. Well, look at that. That did not work out well. And as Super Awesome Death Killer looked the other way, you saw his turrets begin to turn that way. And I'm hoping he's going to be able to keep his guns to the port side of his ship and run broadside to the Kremlin. I have to give the edge to the Kremlin here, unless the Kremlin player just does not know what he's doing. There's a nice shot. Oh, Kremlin's going to show some side here. And when this is over, the game's going to be over. 
This looks like it's gonna be a four kill game, which is a super awesome death killer. Another 12,000 or so there. And he's got his rear turret ready to go. Just has to get in position to do it. Just have to hope nobody steals it from him in the meantime. Oh, wow. <laughs> that did not work out the way that he expected. But that's all right. So, 77 shells on target. Two floods, right? That was for the, the airstrikes, right? With the depth charges. 11 incapacitations, five depth charge heads, three ships sunk, two citadels, some awards. Great game. 227,689 damage. And there it is, the victory. Well played, super awesome death killer. It was a fun game to watch. Yamato on capable hands is always fun. Confederate. There we go through the details of the damage and how it accrued. 2635 base XP. Hats off to Mocha and Zoo in the U190. Absolutely phenomenal game. And our hero put shells on a lot of things. A lot of things. All in all, very solid game.